Welcome back, guys, to the show. I bet you missed all of us. We went on the show last week because uh, life got caught in between, so we weren't uh, ready for an episode. But we're back with a bang, and tonight I'm here with Shatul from India. Hey, guys. I'm with Libor from UK. You know him as Billzoid. Hey, guys. And of course, I'm here with the lovely lovely french mate of ours truth hey, hey guys <laughs> that is also the producer for the show and tonight he's gonna be with us to talk about what happened in the hw bot tour so without further ado let's jump right into the competitions and the uh, rankings of hw bot guys what can you tell us about everything um uh, you shadow you want to go first yeah, well, there's actually plenty going on. I mean, Trof, Trof, uh, Trof has the details about the whole Montreal event and uh, the Yogi Kata event as well. But um, in terms of in in terms of the competitions, there's there's plenty going on. You've got the OC World Cup in Yogi Kata going on. You've got the OC World Cup in Montreal. You've got obviously you've got the Pro OC and Division One rounds running, and you've got obviously Team Cup. Team Team Cup is heating up. There's about 14 days to go and. Yeah, so Team Cup's the one competition that's actually heating up. Alza OC finished, uh, so that was good. I mean, uh, yeah, so lots going on. Uh, Rookie Rumble has has still time to go. It's 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 still the thirtieth. Uh, so I'm gonna actually talk about basically I'm gonna talk about Team Cup because that's 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 actually what's actually heating up right now. And then Trof can talk about the rest. So um, right now in the league we've got Overclock.net, we've got Warp Nine Systems in second place, and then Extreme Overdrive CC Team Italy. Good job, Italy, uh, in third place. And then we've got the ROG Czech OC guys uh, in fourth, and the Reddit Overclocking Team in fifth. So <clears throat> the top guys are managing to hold on to their positions right now, but the competition is definitely heating up because look at the gap between first and second. There's hardly a gap. There's there's, there's about 22 points there. So. One or two good results from uh, Warp Nine Systems, and you know the rankings could very well change. And same thing, uh, even the fight for third and fourth position is there's four points in it, and there's eight points yeah. in four. So it's really, really beginning to heat up right now. Um, you've got you you've got multiple stages. So right now, if you actually look at if you actually look at stage one, you've got you know Overclock.net in the lead. Um, we won't have the time I, to go uh, yeah. in all the okay. stations so, because so, we have 30 so, minutes okay. on the show tonight. <laughs> That's actually true. Okay, guys, what, for once, let's not make it a two-part show. Well, okay, so then for what it's worth, then I'll just get on with the Galax one. And anyways, we've, we've discussed who's in the lead there with uh, Team Cup. But the Galax uh, OC Championship as well. That's on the the worldwide qualifier. So far, only only we have only four guys in here. Um, uh, you've got Iki, Bob NZ, Bullshooter, and OGS with Iki in the lead right now. So 15 days to go. Uh, there, As people start getting their hardware and the memory and stuff, I'm expecting more and more results to come. Guys are still receiving their hardware right now. So yeah, that's about it. I mean, uh, the main the main stuff actually, you have the information for Truf, so uh, about Montreal and yeah, that's the, that that's actually the main thing that happened this week. Yeah, cool. Um, Atlas, do you want me to go through the uh, Montreal event straight in? Uh, yeah, let's let's go right to the to the, straight to the point. Uh, uh, we had at the Dreamhack in Montreal uh, one of the stages of the HW Bot World Tour. So as every uh, stage of the World Tour, there was the chance. Uh, of course, there was the competition side of things where extreme overclockers uh, were fighting to get a, a qualifications for the. For the for the finals, uh, but uh, of course there was also uh, a workshop section for the event that allowed users to just learn the basics in Overclock, or by paying a special ticket, also to have access to extreme ways of cooling the systems. So uh, LN2, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if yeah, you're yeah, actually, I, I, was, I, was, I was co organizing the event, so I can uh, I can read talk about this one. So uh, over the past two weeks, there was two world tour happening. One was in Indonesia, in Jakarta, which we could, we're going to come back right after uh, talking about Montreal. And the second one was in Montreal, and that was last weekend. That was during the DreamHack Canada, so that's, uh, uh, I think that's the biggest land party now. That's the 
biggest land body in Canada. It used to be an NETS, but they are very close in terms of uh, of uh, amount of people. I think it was close to two thousand gamers. Like uh, bring your the BYOC. Uh, so uh, that was that, that was that was huge. That was in the biggest uh, the show floor that you can have in Montreal on like in one in one uh, in one place in one level. And that was nice. Actually, I loved the event. Uh, it's been the, the second year in a row they do it in Montreal. Uh, that's the second year in a row that I do attend as well. And I mean, from last year to this year, it was like, I won't say day and night, but I was insane uh, in terms of how the event was uh, being evolving and so on. So the HWBOT World Tour was at DreamHack Montreal. Um, because it was supposed to be at PAX, then PAX could not, have, could not, uh, could not happen, so we made it in Montreal. And um, we were focusing mostly on the workshops, so workshops for the better, so the rigorous thing that we do uh, within the HWBOT World Tour. Um, so 30 minutes training, then 30 minutes you can try by yourself on the computer that uh, was provided by, uh, by the World Tour organizer. Um, something very interesting at this location was that Everyone was using X299 platform and the 7920X Core i9 X series. So wow. amateur were testing wow. out 12 core <laughs> CPU from Intel. Just, wow. just like that, you know. It's, I uh, don't even have a 12 core from Intel. That yeah, says sure. a lot. <laughs> but that, that was great. I mean, usually, I mean, I remember like last year with it, Brazil, there was the G32 K, so the first one you can get. Damn. And this year was like the most expensive one you can get up until uh, more weeks, but like people were like, "Hey, do you want to try a two over Oh yeah, I know the basics, blah blah blah. It's like I don't think I uh, I want to do it. It's like, hey, we have the twelve core. It's like, oh, ready? Okay, I want to try. <laughs> and we have the same CPUs even for LN two. And yeah, that's the second thing. So the first part was uh, the amateur that you guys right now on the screen. So we're using the Intel Core i nine seventeen nine X CPU. Uh, so the 12 core that was cooled on by an a all-in-one wood from Alpha Cool called the Ice Power 420. I was actually impressed that for two things, the amount of load that it can sustain. So even with the mm -hmm. 12 core on the load, no one hit the thermal truck ever. And wow. the second thing was we can mount them on the bench table as well. <laughs> yeah, on the side, right? Yeah, on the side, which was is actually that on, a, even on is the that top, you can do it. 420? Yeah, that's a 420. Wow. So yeah, that was uh, it's like a three uh, one forty fans or. And yeah, yeah, it's it's basically uh, custom liquid parts made for an AIO. It it's, still has a really a slow pump. Yeah, but yeah, yeah but... that was that was good enough for what we're doing, and even the twelve cores yeah. uh, were not hitting the. I mean, you hit the current limit and the power limit before you hit any. Yeah, right. the fact is, since it's built on the bench table and it's horizontal, not vertical, you don't have any pressure drop. So even though the bump is low, there's not really uh, Ignoring, a Ignoring, you know, the restriction of the entire water block and the giant radiator. Yeah, but you usually take in consideration also the height difference. But so, it's never, like nobody has more than like 30 centimeters of height in their case. Like uh, your case is maybe 70 tall. I do. No, yeah, yeah, but you have a freaking TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not that. It's it's always forty to fifty centimeters centimeters in height in mid towers, because you oh. if you go for a custom liquid cooling, you just install the pump in the lowest part of the case for an easy drain. So it's always yeah, almost it the entire it, height. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I mean, unless it's AI, but never mind. <laughs> okay. I digress. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry, man. Um, they were using the Snow Silence uh, by Seasonic, so one of power. Uh, that was pretty right. enough, didn't have any issue. And, uh, so, so that was one part that was just for the amateur on IO water cooling. And then we did some basic training with anyone that wanted to do it uh, for the XOC. So basically what happened is right. there were some people that knew how to do overclocking before and they say, and I was like, hey, I have liquid on, on the show. So, I mean, if anyone wants to try it, that's going to be easy. I give you the safety training, I explain you how that works. Uh, you know already how to overclock, so basically, no, you have you have one part missing, which is how to control the temperature now. And people love that. I, I mean, at first, they were like, oh my god, that's no, that's crazy, I don't want to do it. It's like, oh, it seems 
like, no, that's super easy. This is the liquid nitrogen, just be careful with it. And this is your thermometer and the CPU pod. And it's basically like, yeah, just stay between like negative 50 and negative 60. I mean, that was just for them to try to train on you no know, maintaining temperature between the, within a certain range. And people were at first like, oh. was that like just idle or did you actually do any load? No, no, they, they bench next to you. Impressive. Yeah. My experience with anything, like even on X99, is like you try to maintain temperature on that and you have to pour, 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 and it just sprays everywhere. But that's the trick. That was the <laughs> trick for them. It's like, okay, this is the computer is not doing anything. Try to control it. But first, you have all the people that pour like hell on the pot. And it's like, okay, for now it's working. It's like, yeah, see, it's like negative 55. Yeah, wait for it. Oh, yeah, it's negative 75 now. That's an issue. So we have to control that. And then after that, we made we made them by team of two. One was managing the temperature, the other one was managing the overclocking and the benchmark. But at uh -oh. first they don't synchronize. So at first, like, oh what happens? Like, guys, you're a team of two. You have to talk to each other. Like, I'm running the benchmark, so that will eat more. So you have to be careful on what happens. And like we find out that in a good 15 minutes, people actually understand how that works. And they quite managed to stay within the negative 50. So that was very interesting. We had uh, we had some friends uh, there. We had some tech tubers, local tech tubers as well. Uh, on the picture right now, it's uh, uh, Apex Predator 5 uh, from uh, Montreal community and Frenard from uh, a tech tuber like from on YouTube. Uh, we had uh, Carl, Mr. TechQC, the guy that was doing uh, the leak for the 8700K that we might talk about uh, later in the show. So there was a lot of people tuning in and people loved it. So I guess that would be point more this uh I wish if I have the time. So if I have the time I would it's just fun and people loved it. So yeah, that was uh that was cool, quite a good turnout as well in terms of people that show there. I think there was like a good people that uh, tried the uh, N N2 workshop and we did that only on one day. Wow. Wow. That's impressive. impressive. That is really that, that that was that was really fun. Uh, people loved it as well. Like the amateur yeah, was there. It's like yeah, it's like you can play with the twelve core CPU that you cannot yeah. even buy. So yeah, <laughs> sure, be my guest. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I that, will do the same. That was a that was a great event. And Timo Day pulled out like a uh, Timo Day Xiela pulled out an insane job in terms of uh, managing the. Uh, like uh, everything, the show and so on. And on Sunday, which was the, the third day of the Eve, we had the one versus one matches. Um, that was very fun to watch as well, especially because, uh, by the way, the replay of the lives uh, for the matches are going one every two days on the YouTube channel uh, of Overclocking. So uh, this weekend is gonna be the second quarterfinal to be up and up until Two weeks you will have all the matches the guy that won the guy that won the one versus one amateur matches does not even own a computer unreal what <laughs> the guy that won the one versus one amateur competition do not own a, com a computer wow and he never what? knew about overclocking before and he kicked out two of the guys that came here and said yeah i know what to do overclocking that should be easy for me Jesus. Best part is I That's... tried I tried myself to do some scores uh, on air and water cooling. Those guys were actually better than me. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting gold. That's why. I, I, I said I said it. I'm not a good overclocker. I know how to produce. The, I know how to do all the things around. I know how to do about it, but I'm not a good. I'm not a good overclocker. I said it. That's bad. That's bad. Hey, it's okay. You don't <laughs> have to be a good overclocker to be a teacher for it. I mean, That's if I, true. I mean, it's like driver. The people that go to drive are not Formula One drivers. Are they good driver? I. Anyway, so that was nice. That was the uh, the one v one. The setup was super nice. If you guys have the chance to get the video, uh, go check it out. We had a uh, large amount of cameras. We had cameras on each of the player, good quality ones. We had uh, the right. We have the feedback from this. We had the feedback from uh, the venue as well. So yeah, that was uh, that was. A, a nice thing, and there was one thing we did with um, Penner, the, the, the French uh, tech tuber that lives in Montreal. We did an exhibition match. 
So we basically did the same thing as the amateurs, so like 15 minutes on one system and 15 minutes on the other system. But we're just messing around. But actually, we failed super hard. Like, if we were to compete against some of the other guys, we would have actually lost. <laughs> <laughs> and we did that for like a good 30 minutes. And then after, we did a target attack. So we used sign bench, And we were like, okay, first target is like 2710 point, for example. And the first one to hit that target finish for the one closer to the, that target of points in 10 minutes actually is, the, is good enough and win the round. Three times we hit the exact right target. So it was like like close like getting close like ten point, eight points, points is like run boom right on it. And that was what like not even one minute after that it was like okay, just, just run, it's like oh shit, I have this so that was uh, that was a very really good weekend for the people that watch it on the on Twitch as wedding but watch that. Uh, if you have the chance to watch the replay that's going to be up in an app from now, uh, go check it out. That, that was super cool. And that's pretty much it for Montreal. Yeah, and what about your Jakarta? So, Jack Jakarta, so as you guys know, Jack Jakarta is in the... Yeah. The um, SWBOT World Tour Indonesia was stopping in uh, Jokcom Tech, which is like a trade show. Uh, an IT trade show based in Jakarta. Uh, that's the same thing, that's the same location as last year, where mm -hmm. uh, the HW Bot World to Indonesia last year stopped at the exact same location, pretty much the exact same yeah. time as well. And uh, this year, once again, that was uh, managed and arranged by Jagat OC and Jagat Review. Well, Jagat Review and the over 50 counterpart, which is Jagat OC. And they had quite a nice, um, uh, like, Quite a nice space because there was uh, they were partnering with uh, Intel, Seasonic, Asus, and some of the like motherboard manufacturers uh, because they had to use different motherboard for the uh, AOC amateur overclock tournament, something that only exists in Indonesia so far, um, where they have to where they give new people some training. So usually it's Alva that train uh, that train the people, people from universities came uh, come there and just train on new hardware, and they have to do. I think it's like two scores on two different platforms. So they have to understand and, and manage the overclock two different them or the four depending on, I think they have to use one score on each of the platform, but over two days, it's a, it's a little, little bit more complex than the 1v1 thing, but it's insane. I mean, there's first, there's a lot of industry that are into it. And the format is actually quite interesting. Uh, the second thing is most of the guys just Come there, it's like, okay, you have to bring your cooler, and I think that's pretty much it, like cooler and thermal paste or something like that. And as <laughs> of last year, I remember that there was some people like hold hard drive to hold on the, the cooler on this. Yeah, uh, on the wasn't there one guy with like a bag of rice yeah, sitting yeah. on his heat sink? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead of actual oh, mounting hardware. Oh, Jesus, yes. I remember now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Actually, we can even see that in the uh, after movie we did with uh, Xiaola on the as well. If you look for HWBot World Tour Indonesia 2016, well, uh, it will definitely. Be. And yeah, yeah, okay. they were using like rice bag and, uh, and, and quite a few different, uh, quite a lot of different things to, to, to do it. This year, they had um, two, the two people from the AOC were qualified to go to the OCWC plus. Uh, AOCT is the amateur part, the amateur competition as by Jagat Review. And actually the, the team, the winning team, if we can say, or, or the, the guys from the winning team access to overclocking world championship, which is the premium overclocking uh, competition. And uh, if we if we had a look uh, there was uh, B Boy Chess, one of the like number one Indonesia. So that's the best overclocking in Indonesia. There was Speed Dot Fastest, which uh, was there as well last year. We had uh, Rodi, was there last year as well. Royal Flush, which I think was there as well. Uh, and some niggas like Sandalwood, uh, Ivan Kappa, Blue Fiber, and that's pretty much it. And I think Blue Fiber and uh, Ivan Kappa are the two guys that came from the amateur. 
uh, pretty young, quite interesting to them, you know, putting out some uh, extreme level tricking uh, result right there. And I think that's actually the one of the two new guys that won. I don't have the uh, end result because the news was not on, but um, they had at, not B-Boy Jess, which was the, the leader getting into the company, one, but mm -hmm. one of the outsider coming from amateur OC. So once again, when there is new people getting in, when the rules are being uh, tuned in to avoid any luck with God or anything, then that gets very interesting to see how the guys do it. Yeah, that's great to know. I mean, we, we've been pushing people to overclock in the last few weeks of this show. I mean, you've been doing that for 20 years, maybe? 15. 15. <laughs> I'm not yeah. that old. <laughs> 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 Almost. <laughs> and yeah, so the the point of the show is always keep pushing it. So that's it's it's a great news to have new people joining the OC club. Let's Fresh call it blood. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh meat. <laughs> exactly. Um I guess we're pretty much I think that, we're pretty I, much I, that's, it for, that's it for for the world tour updates. Uh, one thing is there is yeah. still a giveaway going on on the SW World Tour. I'm just giving the, the link in the live chat, and you guys can. That's the one for Montreal, and you guys can win Seasonics, Los Angeles, and what PSU, or one of the all-in-one water cooling that we use Alpha Cool Eight Power Pro. So if you guys want Ooh. to win that, just go on the live chat. I just post the uh, the link for it, and they still just your four days left for applying. That's great, that's great. I, I'm actually gonna review the Ice Bear for 20 in, in a couple of days. I'm I'm waiting for the shipping. So yeah, that's that's great to know that people are gonna enjoy something like that if they win actually. But yeah, that's the point. Um I guess we're pretty that's much perfect covered up everything about the HW bot word, so we're gonna dive into the two week Where? news that happened in the last 14 days. <laughs> and we have nine minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. <laughs> we have to do this. <laughs> I believe in you guys. <laughs> okay, let's start right into it. Uh, it seems like uh, NVIDIA is working on a 1070 Ti uh, video card because yeah. they want to compete against the Vega 56 Vega. card. As yeah. we know, Vega 64 wasn't really successful as a product launch because of shortage, price gouging, as usual, uh, high power consumption, the as same usual. Goes for Vega 56. Vega 56 is the same, but I, I just had to buy one for 480. You can't tell me they aren't gouging those things. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying they're not, but I'm saying that yeah. when the retail price is it, and when you actually get your hands on the Vega 56 card, it's a really competitive card, especially against the 1070. So Nvidia is Honestly, working. Honestly, once you overclock, if you can cool it, there's no 1080 that can touch it in Fire Strike. Like you yeah, can't, but many on air, like air or like on water, you can't get a 1080. To outrun a Vega. That's cool. That's so, cool. And, yeah, it's I, like, I, I admittedly, the, the, the Vega will burn like two, two to maybe even three times the power of a 1080. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe two, not three, but yeah, it's, that's it's the point. It, it's not yeah. quite 700 watts <laughs> per card. Yeah. But the the fact is that this 1070 Ti has appeared in a BIOS screenshot as a Strix. Uh, eight gigs card. So the rumor said the rumor mill started saying that the 10, 1070 Ti is gonna have eight gigs of GDDR5X, and that's really important because when you put X in the GDDR5 equation, you cannot use those cards for mining unless you just like to mm. lose efficiency. I mean, you can, but they're not as efficient Ten, and the, like. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not the necessarily as yeah. fast as GDDR5 cards, but they're still not that slow. But yeah, it definitely it's like if you're a miner, you're gonna not you're gonna prefer yeah. getting a yeah. 1070 to a 1070 yeah. Ti. Yeah, 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 yeah. Without Absolutely, a doubt. Yeah. Though there are algorithms which pretty much don't care. So, yeah. Yeah, it depends on Ethereum. It it's gonna be quite of a game. Zcash or whatever currency you mine. What algorithm yeah. you mining? Yeah. yeah. 
So this and one, so this one will be between the 1070 and the 1080 then. 1080. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's gonna be like 15% slower than the 1080 and 15% ha- faster than the 1070, I guess. Yeah, it's... Nvidia did put a big gap between those two, didn't they? Yeah, probably yeah, because they, they expected the move. Yeah. It, it's yeah. funny though, because if you actually if you put a v, uh, v64 BIOS on a V56, uh, Gamers Nexus recently posted results. Clock for clock, a 56 and a 64 are the exact same thing. Literally exact same scores. They're on top of each other. Those so 500 is. extra shaders don't do a damn thing. So it's <laughs> yeah. like... It's basically, uh, buy a 56, put a 64 scale. BIOS on it, have 1080 performance for less than a 1080. So... Yeah. I, I, like, definitely for out-of-the-box experience, NVIDIA always wins. Just, like... Because, I don't know, AMD out-of-the-box is just, like... It's it's they can't configure the cards. They really can't, and that gets me even more annoyed about the freaking lack of BIOS flashing, because because you can't like fix a lot of the issues that they leave on. You mean you cannot fix that when you burn the card? Oh, well, <laughs> I didn't fix- burn the card. It dr- died. It didn't catch on fire literally. Oh, you fried it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all your fault. It's all right your in the fault. spot. Uh, I, I you can see the moment the. The green <laughs> like, yeah. oh, no, it. You're trying to mess around with it. Sometimes that can happen. Yeah. Hey, if they had proper, said. hey, if AMD could implement proper voltage controls, which they can't, because they can't, like they can't even get proper clock controls, then I wouldn't need a stupid volt mod to get core voltage working. On the other hand, Nvidia actively like tries to make core voltage control not work at all. So I mean. Yeah. Okay. At, at this point, I really feel like AMD's just gotten uh, fallen to NVIDIA's level in terms of overclocking support. Though you can play with the power states better. Like, there, you have more control over the clocks than on NVIDIA. There's just one little issue where if you try to exceed 950, uh, 1950 megahertz core clock, uh, the card actually sort of glitches out and runs its stock. Yeah, we, we talked about... Which the, is really annoying on liquid emergency. nitrogen because the card doesn't like it even at minus 70 it can go over 1950 like it was running benchmarks at 1950 just fine and it's like okay so can we go higher yeah it's a software bug it's a software bug but it's just like amd's never gonna fix it because amd can barely make the driver work right now maybe i'm not sure i'm still having problems on the 580 we should should, their soft like their their software support, like, yeah, I get that they're reworking their entire overclocking API, but, like, their ability to support things and not break certain features on new architectures is just awful. <laughs> it's just really bad. Like, they recently completely destroyed uh, HPM overclocking for Fiji. Like, it just doesn't work since the start of this year. Yeah. Speaking of the 10 and 70 Ti... <laughs> 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 Speaking of it, there, there's not really much we know about it. We just know there is eight eight gigs of GDDR five X, and it's in between the ten seventy and the ten eighty. It was a. We don't have a launch date. We don't have specs, power. We don't even know for certain if it exists. <laughs> yeah, it, it may be just uh, a something. If there's dicks to... like this, that's going to happen. Especially with the yeah. jab they have. In the... yeah, I know that they have one thing. of the oh, right. editor in that French. For them, it's easy to pull out the 10th die just for Christmas, which is going to be. I mean, if you launch that in October, you have the chance to. Uh, some of the new space by AMD or Intel regarding new CPU release that might happen. And it just, so that is happens. going to happen on October 5th. I don't know. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you don't know. Brands, AIB partners are publishing everyone. Everyone yeah, are like, like, everyone's like half screenshots of the mainboard October 5th. Like, we know about yeah. it. Like, it's not a secret <laughs> yeah, anymore. It's just like, you, the whole copy link thing. Uh, and Gigabyte did yeah. uh, performance something, something October 5th. Yeah, and Asus did the same thing. Yeah, uh, Asus did the same thing. Then I, I think he, they removed it. Uh, yeah. uh, MSI did the same. Uh, so it's it's out in the wild. It's out in the open. On October fifth, expect the launch of Coffee Lake CPUs, Coffee Lake. 
And speaking of Coffee Lake CPUs, there was there were many benchmark leaks this couple of weeks because of this guy we got in the chat with us. Oh, Carl is here. <laughs> is Carl here? No, no, I don't think that Carl is in the live chat. Okay, okay. Oh, no, I thought he was there with you. I'm no, 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 sorry. no, no. I, I tried because okay, okay, guys. Uh, there was a leak that the guys you can see on the on the on the on the on the you know that's the name is Carl Mora. He's from Montreal area. He's a he's a tech tuber. He's a very good friend of mine, and he was actually one of the guys helping us out on the trip. But at some point, we find out that there was an HP Omen computer featuring a Coffee Lake CPU inside. We didn't know which one because there was no screen attached to it. And I was like, I don't have the time to do that. I don't want to do it of, uh, of the NDAs I have signed in all front. So I cannot just do that. And it was like, I don't care. I don't have NDAs. It was like, I'm not part of, you know, it's not part of the crew. It's not part of, it's just like one of the one of the guys that was at, at the trade show in the for the weekend, but he was not exactly with us. And it was like, okay, sure. I'm just going to take a screen and leave. And I didn't saw him when he took I saw it after <laughs> when he came back. I mean, I'm watching the video. Smile. He literally walked a couple of kilometers in the fair with a screen in his hands and nobody said anything. What? Dude, it's DreamHack. <laughs> People were bringing in their whole gaming rigs. But that's the whole point. Oh, he just looks a little crazy. lost. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I don't remember where I put my PC. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, when, he, when he arrived on the, on one of the booths there that had the common computer there, just like put the screen, plug the screen. There's people around like me. Ha ha, that's funny. Ha ha, whatever. Yeah, and the HP guy is helping him with the cables. I, I don't know if it's an HP guy. I don't know if it's just uh, unreal, bro. We, we are HP. just assuming. I I don't know if that's an official HP domain guy or someone that was there hired by someone to do the promo for it. And I do yeah, think true. that it's not the official. Because someone in the know will know that this is unreleased hardware, and I know there was some um, HP Omen guy on the trade show because with some of them, and well, let's say that we thought that there was one of the script that was plugged to it, but not, and then Carl says, fuck it, I just went to it, and he did it live, he did it live as well, so that was not planned, that was not something, it was like, get in there, plug the system, power off, power on again, and just you know, try to try to see Boots. Because actually, we didn't That's even knew that boots. So Carl did a very nice, uh, how can I say that? Uh, it's always. <laughs> like, honestly, Carl I mean, just fucked up his career. And he knows, he's not going to review anything from Intel anymore in his life. <laughs> well, I mean, or less. For two, yeah, there's two things. The first thing is, you know, you know that this chip is not on the market up until next month. You know that if you leak benchmark, people will love it because people are waiting for benchmark to happen. You know that as someone that is not known on the English world of YouTube, that if you don't do it properly, showing off that you you add access to it, people will say you are cheating benchmark or you're ex like uh, thinking that it will be a good score. So what it is is really that, from what we can see on the video is. Did it live at first? Then he uploaded the, the video on his um, on his YouTube channel app. So that's it. Is so is it's like plug the thing and the open is like, oh my god, that's the eighty seven hundred K. He was not even man. expecting this one. <laughs> so it's basically I like launch CPU ID the CPU and just run the run sign event. Jesus. So that's the first. It was like yeah, it's gonna be a knife. I'm nope. Top of the end. Okay, okay. I was not even you, expecting that at the uh, the i7, like it, yeah. especially tr showing that on the trade show. I don't know who at H that. I don't know who at H had the uh, the guts to do it or thought that no one will notice. But even the motherboard name that was in that um, in that H Omen setup was uh, it, it was like um, ES and SKU and they have some like code names on the on the platform. It doesn't it doesn't say like Z70. It doesn't yeah, say Yeah, because they have like custom that. made motherboards yeah. uh, for their systems. So that's OEM yeah. motherboard. And from what we can see on the uh on, on the score, I cannot say the score by myself, but I mean you guys can read it well. 
Uh, yeah, I'm watching the live stream and I'm waiting for the score to come up. It is... Uh, I'm blind. I'm sorry. Uh, 1230. So, yeah. 1.2 thousand. But that's yeah. very on par with the some of the Ryzen it's, well, it's on par it's on with a six core Kaby Lake. Like, yeah. it's 50% no, Ryzen, or... Yeah, Ryzen 6 core. It's yeah. Okay, we don't have a six core KB. I mean, no, we I do mean, have a six core it's, Skylake, which is technically the same architecture as a KB Lake, which is yeah. technically the same architecture as Coffee as Lake. Coffee Lake. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> so they just grabbed the seventy eight hundred X and changed the package. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Okay. They cut out some cache and some memory no, channels. This is, it's not on. It's on ring, isn't it? Like this should be a CPU using the ring. Oh, not okay, it's not detector. mesh. Okay, yeah, it's, yeah, it's ring. So we can uh, when the CPU is gonna come out officially in a couple of weeks or maybe three. Allegedly, uh, <laughs> maybe <laughs> uh, we're gonna see the difference between same amount of cores and different kind of architecture mesh versus ring. That is one of the things that we discussed three or four episodes ago. So if you okay. wanna check check it out, you can go and browse the YouTube channel of uh, Overclocking TV and and see that for yourself about our discussion about it. But yeah, the the there's not there's nothing much to say about it just because it's just leaks and expectations so far. Oh, but... there, was, there was someone from the live chat. I have to say, like Alex G say, PJ thirty was someone from the staff. No, and he especially. It and he put the disclaimer on all his videos and so on. He was not part of the staff, he was just a volunteer. But when he did that, he was out of everything that was really that for the and that's yeah, a good the, reason why it's not on the CTU, by the way. The problem more. is the yeah. problem is that the 8700K is allegedly be priced at like 489. We don't the have last the price. We don't have the official price, but we have it. By, uh, I mean, by one week. of the last rumors was more than 400 euros. That is more than 400 dollars and pounds. I, and I wouldn't really be surprised if Intel did that. I, yeah, yeah, because because the selling because the the new i5 will perform like a 7700K in multi-threaded. Yeah. And, and so they can put that at the 7700K price point, say, screw you all if you thought you were going to save money, <laughs> and then release this on top of and that, and be like, oh yeah, and we're faster than AMD at streaming now on main I, business I honestly it's very don't know. Business-wise, it makes sense. I mean, business-wise, what you want to increase is uh, AESP, so the average sales price of what you have. So the more I and Q you have, so you, you still let the people choose from what they have, but basically you can bump by 20, 25 bucks all your prices. You basically are more profitable. The, by the 20, thing is, bucks. the thing is, Coffee Lake's going to be a bigger die. I mean, KB Lake's already bigger than Skylake, and now Coffee Lake needs to get two more cores on the same 14 nanometer node. It's a plus right. plus. I mean, yeah, plus plus, but that's so far been clock upgrades and lower voltage to start. Like KB Lake is 14 nanometer plus, and it's just bigger than the older. Yeah, I mean, you always have the Skylake. So I mean, six core, six core is pretty much there, and not to mention six hundred. So it's gonna be a bit bigger, maybe a lot bigger, depending on how it ends up. But I yeah. think the four, the quad cores aren't like most of the die on KB Lake isn't actually cores. Like a good chunk is the iGPU, so IGPU. it's not gonna be that much bigger. Yeah. But yeah. I do that would probably explain most of the. <coughs> Yeah, that would, that would. Yeah, so we yeah, gotta wait then, and see, then, as usual. It, it, We've been saying that for months. It's gonna hurt because 450 plus, I mean, for, for a top-end CPU when you've got Ryzen 8 cores, you know, similar, similarly. I priced. mean, for here's the thing, though. Ryzen really, like, it's like, yeah, AMD caught up on single-threaded. They're still behind this thing, like... If you can cool this, which this is yeah. one thing I'm worried about. This is going to be a six core, right? This is going to pull literally 50% more than a 7700K yeah. in terms of power. Yeah. This is now going to pull about as much power as, as Ryzen, if not more, um, yeah. when maxed out. No, actually, so, they already are on par. Ryzen 7 and 7700K 
five G versus bar. four. Yeah, there's they're yeah, like nine. They're pretty much on top of each. Them. Yeah, so this this so is going to end going up going already over the top. Yeah, so they're going to be pulling more power than Ryzen, and like, I don't know, maybe all the like maybe the Z three seventy chipset thing with Intel being like, yeah, we're we're not letting not going to be supporting Z two seventy. It might be to bump up the motherboard quality for Z three seventy since yeah. Intel does have really strict regulations on what you can and can't ship. Um, but yeah, I like it's going to run hotter. You know, and we, don't forget, hot. there's going to be Elmer's glue under the IHS. <laughs> of course. Of course. Exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, and yeah, this yeah, is... It, we're going to wait. We're going to wait for the... But like, for, the, but like is it, for example, if you just look at it, $450, you've got 1230 whatever it's cost. And then the, the, the 1800X, which is similarly priced, maybe just, just a little bit more. That thing is well over 1600. It's like 1610, 1620. So significant gap for the same money in terms of at least multi-core and rendering and I, stuff like that. I yeah, if the, Intel... if the CPU is 450, you can actually buy the entire platform with the same money with this, the Intel CPU. You can buy yeah. CPU, yeah, main buy board, and memory. <laughs> yep. That's yeah. you, um, yeah. But... but I was talking about Ryzen. I mean, you can buy uh, a Ryzen 5, a main board, and yeah, a memory also. kit with the price of yeah. an Intel CPU. Yeah. So I, I think Intel is mostly pushing the 8700K. As a sort of, because the 7700K, if you look at it, it gets absolutely crushed by a Ryzen in multi-threaded. Like, yeah. it's not yeah. even funny. So, basically, for, like, streaming, if you were streaming, you would always want a Ryzen up until now. Whereas with this, yeah. you get yeah. really nice single-threaded, and you get the extra two cores. So, this well, should be reasonably sure. decent yeah. at streaming. Yeah. Exactly. Compared to Ryzen. Yeah. So, you, you won't have as much of a trade-off. You still spend more money on it, though. So Yeah. It's it's always the same. If you want the best, you pay the best. So yeah, we're gonna wait and see. It. That's it. The people and want the yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be quite of a of a challenge in the next weeks. We we we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. And to close up the show, we're gonna talk about one of our dearest friends. I mean, my God on earth, <laughs> we're talking about <laughs> Kingpin. Vince Lucido, the, you may know as the maker of the Kingpin cards for EVGA and the, also the Dark main boards, but never mind. And he managed to smash, and I'm saying literally smash, the Time Spy world record with four GPUs. I mean, we always see people send begging for like 12 points, but... He managed Don't worry, to beat guys, the... I'm coming. <laughs> he was like, okay, let's match the record. He got 5,000 points more than the second place. He got from 30,000 to 35,000 points. He yeah. shows the amazingness of that man and why yeah, I consider him being right. a god on earth. Thanks. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Don't wait for it. Just, just let me pass him from. That's, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. He, he managed yeah, to beat four yeah, Titan yeah. XP, so more shedders. But yeah, much well, lower. That's quality. that's like been a thing for Kingpin Kingpin and his cards as long as he's had cards. Like yeah, there's yeah. never been a Titan at the top of a four way ranking as long as there was a Kingpin, Kingpin edition Kingpin. with the same yeah. chip. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's impressive. If only NVIDIA would let the AIB partners to make Titan X versions. Honestly, even, honestly, <laughs> FGA <laughs> has the resources. Like, I bet most of these manufacturers have the resources to literally just lift a Titan's core yeah, off, and slap put it on. onto a real PCB, oh, and yeah. run it that way. It's but just NVIDIA would kill it. whoever does that. But they're, yeah. they're, that's the yeah. thing. They're yeah. not allowed to do I'm sure. And that costs a ton of money. Even the Titan X, you have to buy them from it. They don't get. They don't get any. Yeah, but like, they're if you're bidding 1080 Ti's for LN2, for... you're still spending tons of money. Yeah, I mean, recently I read there is there there is a sensor binning, not a GPU binning. Like they bin cards for their clocks, then they bin the sensors on the King, King, Kingpin cards because some of those sensors are flowed when under LN2. When below yeah. zero, so they're actually binning binned cards. So I wouldn't actually 
matter about the fact that they're gonna buy t- Titan XP's. Also, because Titan XP's and King Beans are really close in price. It's not that much of a difference. It's like 200 bucks and difference. And let's face it, for them, it's more interesting than the 1080p. Because they, yeah. they can actually sell that card, yeah. 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 And they're selling, they're selling quite well as well. I, mean, I, I did this one at, the, at PAX. Um, not not last weekend, the weekend before. We're actually uh, hijacking the live stream from TV. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, that we, we hijacked the stream for TVG three days in a row. Uh, the first day, uh, Jacko was around, but he was like, uh, uh, okay, that's too late. You guys are already online. The second day, he didn't even know it. And the, the third day, we basically yeah. hijacked the stream for like three hours. So we're trying to <laughs> overclock the card and so on. And uh, we're actually overclocking, overclocking Nike. So yeah, um, quite interesting. But I love the fact that the bugs are in the back. I have to say, like, this is genius. And I guess yeah. a lot of people will start doing Yeah, that. really, really. If every manufacturer would do this, I would be so happy because it just makes wiring so clean i mean just your system looks so clean when you like wire it up instead of having like these wires come up the front and then, yeah just, i mean it I depends i mean if you're on a clock if you're in a, in a if you're in a short case i can see that being a problem but yeah come on, you don't other than a that TIKPG yeah in a short case. well here's the thing there's those itx enthusiasts Right, just by the cram as much the stuff like they're, they're not right in the head. <laughs> 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 they put Titan yeah. XPs in like seven liter cases. Yeah, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know the card is pretty much spitting fire out the rear, but I gotta have my case smaller than a laptop. Yeah, <laughs> you know? no, but I mean, like, well, too bad you don't get. You, you don't get to buy the 1080 TI Kingpin. <laughs> Go buy something else, you lot. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah they're the like, should I bring my six pack or my PC? Like, yeah. <laughs> they, they actually have a six pack PC size. Like, it's impressive. But yeah, it, it was an amazing score. It's always the same. I mean, in, in a good way. Uh, just, it, it, I think he was sitting on that score for weeks because he, he oh, just. Oh, oh. He I'm just sure. did the I'm score again sure. to have the validation with the new dates and stuff because he was showing off four way SLI Kingpin Edition cards I benching for testing. months. I think it was so. It was it. like, okay, yeah. let's let's I mean, wait for the four right way. Time. Four way SLI is the pain. First, yeah. you hijack the driver. You need the driver anyway. That's not going uh, the no, 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 no. Is, it's fine for benchmarks. Yeah, benchmarks yeah, work benchmarks out as a okay. box. Yeah, yeah, but still, you need to find a way on which card needs to go, like in order and so on. Honestly. Mm. Yeah. And he, he, but I, I, I think he's used to it. He, I mean, that's do, the only yeah, but it's area. like, he, sure, sure, Allegedly, he's used to it, but it's still time you need to put into testing. Like, you can't just so. skip several hours of testing. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I mean, you have to do that for work. You cannot do that for fun. I mean, King Ping uh, is and the does only guy work. in the world that I know that is able to put out a U4 on LN2 for way life. That's the only guys that I know that can do. Everyone else that tried failed. Yeah, meanwhile, he, he chats with people. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let me, yeah, yeah I'm playing a what, world record. What you yeah. don't know is for the four weeks before that, that was the only thing he was doing 12 hours a day. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the catch. Yeah. That's why he was able to... Take practice. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a golden rule for overclockers. And perfection takes sandbags, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's a tattoo everyone should have like here on the on the chest. Like big one. Big <laughs> Perfection takes sandbagging. <laughs> no, no, no. I... Being first takes sandbagging. Per- perfection <laughs> just mean, requires skill and time. Yeah. And money. And sandbagging. You see, that's always the point <laughs> of everything. But yeah, other than uh, that, the the, there were also other scores that were uh, worth to mention, like Denkov breaking a couple of world records on 3D Mark 05. Vantage and as was, well. He took down Vantage, yeah. I know that. Yeah. 980 yeah. Ti yeah. 
Matrix, so a previous generation car. With the 90, yeah, with a with a 980, yeah, Matrix Platinum. But other than that, there weren't many scores worth oh, to mention. There was a lot of score that only did send. Yeah, exactly. So it's still the same, same I, shit. I, I, I'm kind of <laughs> sad we're not seeing like Asus compete for four way crown anymore. Uh, Dan Cup, right now on the left, I'd say, yeah. yeah. I'm about to test four way and I ask for which card. That's going to be. <laughs> just more yeah, because it's like I, I just remember there Damn. was there was one card which released and it was just back and forth Asus EVGA trading the four way record, which yeah. was just all like that. That was fun. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they were they were like huge teams behind their web the websites changing yep. the the thing like first in the world for this one, and they were like, oh no, we're the second now, and we're gonna change it, and the next day it was all over again. Yeah, you have to be fast enough to get the speed out of that. <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta. <laughs> it's you, valid you as long as you have it. So as long as you submit, you're first. It's valid. You can say it. You can claim it. Yeah. The fact that you're not staying more than two hours, it's a different story. That's an, the whole other game. Yeah, I I bet marketing people started hating the word send backing too. So. <laughs> They're oh, well, that's, they, that's they feel our pain. That's what happened <laughs> when you're chasing world record and there's like a lot of things. I mean, yeah. especially if you take two weeks to do the PR about A score, you're not in the right way of doing it. You need to have the PR yeah, ready and you, and you just yeah. update the score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can have it. I received I received, for example, from some motherboard maker uh, a press release with saying we got the highest DDR4 clock. And like three days before, there was like, uh, okay, this one brand got the actual memory frequency record. Uh, and the next day, someone else. And the day after the PR, there was someone yeah. else too. So, they, yeah, never mind. If we start talking about it, we're never going to finish the show. <laughs> so, just just looking at the four-way ranking, it is pretty like sad right now, if you look at it. Because you have Kingpin at the top at 35,000 points on LN2. And then under that, you have H2O, more H2O, chilled H2O, more H2O, uh, stock cooling, apparently, <laughs> H2O, stock cooling, H2O. Some of these are freaking GTX 1080s. Like the top yeah. ten scores for four way are just really, really sad. Like are quite frankly is, sad. Oh, on the wait, keep, keep that in mind. You need to get. I know. Cards I know. It's that four are over cards. a thousand bucks. Each. Yeah, the, pro people, the problem. The problem is actually, simple. Yeah. If, if, previously, if yeah, you go on. Sorry. Yeah, you will just have some friends that will lend you some of the cards, or a shop that will lend you some of the cards. I will say, don't put LN2. That's the only reason why you cannot have more than eight. Cores on the uh, on the uh, on the four-way uh, SLI system on the IN cards because it's usually not your card and yeah. you don't want to break it. Yeah, but the fact is, previously you could let's say you could take advantage of four cards. It was actually not scaling above three cards. We know that even yeah. three cards was a stretch. But now, if you buy four cards, it's just for those three benchmarks. On the and NVIDIA side, AMD, well, actually, Vega currently doesn't support four-way at all, but... It doesn't support two-way at all. It doesn't support Crossfire, yeah, because, <laughs> yes. you know, AMD and drivers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, actually, Frontier Edition supports Crossfire, kinda. Kinda. Like, that, that's, that's the, the only card catch. that currently supports Crossfire. I don't know how it benches, so... Um, but the, the RX Vegas don't currently support Crossfire, which kind of sucks. Um... Because I was yeah, hoping it's... to do a four-way setup of those. Yeah, but yeah, the the times are changing, and so are the SLI and Crossfire configurations. Yeah. But guys, but dude, I, I think... mean, like, look, if there's one thing, I I just want Crossfire and SLI to come back. I'm sick and tired of this one card business. Like, even with games, dude, what's with all the top games just like supporting one one GPU? It's like doesn't it's Nvidia hard. want to sell? Yeah, I it's mean, look, really it's hard to make it work. But so, but, me, but they've been doing it for so long, and I mean, just look. Every, every time somebody says it, I'm like, just look at Doom. Just look at games that are done right, and those games just crank out fabulous, fabulous numbers. 
You look at Gears of War, it sucks. I mean, Gears of War just does, blind, just does not support SNI. And it's a Microsoft game. Like, what the hell? And the same thing goes for, goes for Forza and like for, for, for several other games. But then the games that do support SNI and where it works, it's just look, such a good just experience. Look at the market. Okay. Just look at the yeah. market. There's no point in spending time in developing for, for multiple uh, uh, graphic adapters. When I think the, the main point is you cannot even buy a first card. Mind no, you, two cards. Ports. It's because of stupid Mining. ports. And one of the days when you could get like 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 I use like for even when I was playing 2K, two two four sixties were better and cheaper than like buying like a four eighty or something. You know, it's not so, the case anymore. It's not the case mm -hmm. anymore. I know, I know. But like that would be awesome because like if you could buy two ten seventies and still use them and they'd be you know they'd be faster than a ten eighty Ti and you you know like the the good old days where like. Two cards actually made a difference. Now it's like you just want to spend as much money as you can buy the single fastest card you can afford and feel happy. You know, and you even know what then, will happen, huh? If people buy two, it's struggles. One for play, it's one for mining. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not. Well, no, like, that's that's weak sauce. Buy one for playing, ten for mining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like wipe those just, store shelves. I, I, I mean, I, it, it sucks because for 4K, even a 1080 Ti at full crank will struggle in certain games. Sure, you'll yeah. get the 60 FPS, but you know, like one, one more generation or like, you know, any, 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 any game that's not coded well or like is like harder on the system, it's going to bring that card to its knees as well. So one 1080 Ti is not enough for 4K if you think future thing is just not. But two 1080s don't work in all the good games. Score. Like, it's like you guys are brainless. Yeah, unfortunately, that's where things are heading. And luckily, they're improving performance on a single card. We're seeing 30% yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. by every generation. That's, so that should help a lot. That's true. But that's guys, thing. let's not talk about gaming or we will need another episode of the a dedicated episode for gaming. <laughs> Next week. Next week. <laughs> Next week, I'm gonna, we're going to talk about gaming. That's it. <laughs> we, we, we decided the topics for the next week. But without further ado, it was a pleasure to have you tonight on the show, or today, or this morning, whenever you're watching, whenever you're watching. It's yeah. still this tonight show for me. <laughs> same here. And thanks for watching us. Subscribe to the... Follow us on Twitch. Subscribe on YouTube if you're watching these on YouTube. Uh, just send us a suggestion for the topics. You can find them in the chat. Some links for the for suggesting us topics to discuss on the show. And I'm Shiro from Italy. There is Shadul from India. Libor from UK. And the amazing French-Canadian truth from Canada. So, bye bye, guys, and see you next week. Keep pushing, bye. guys. <laughs>